The military needs people, and there's a lot of Aboriginal youth out there that could probably be better off joining the military than where they are now. The main reason the military targets Native youth these days is because they're poor and because they don't have very many options. We lend you our children and grandchildren, make good soldiers out of them. We have jobs, they need jobs. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Stopping a native, you can hate it, but there ain't no stopping a native. Ain't no stopping a native, you can hate it, but there ain't no stopping a native. If you were lady, then don't be afraid to show some love. Just so we have an idea of what we're talking about, Master Couple McKee here, he's from uh, Musqueam First Nation in, in the Lower Mainland. And the other uh, corporal here, Corporal Villeneuve, is a Jibwe. And uh, I'm a Jibwe, so we got a little bit of a click going on here. <laughs> and they let three of us in the vault so that you can tell that there's trust here. So, <laughs> we have fun. Ain't no stopping a native. You can hate it, but there ain't no stopping a native. Ain't no stopping a native. You can hate it, but there, there you go. Wow, it's heavy. heavy, eh? <laughs> if the kids just see a bunch of brochures, they're not interested to come and talk to us. But if they see a machine gun there or a, a coyote vehicle, they're gonna come and talk to us and then we break the ice right then and there. Sergeant Ron LeBlanc was raised by a single mother on a small reserve in Manitoba. He started getting into trouble as a teen until a stint in the Army cadets turned him around. Do you guys want to go check out the back of the vehicle? Yeah. Hop on in there. We can hop in there? Yeah. Before I joined the military, I was going in the wrong direction. And with drugs, uh, crime, not quitting school, all these type of things that would really ruin your life. And I made a decision to join the military. And that was the best decision I made, because if I didn't, I would be dead or in jail. The Canadian forces run programs for First Nations that introduce them to military life. Old Eagle is a six-week boot camp that qualifies Aboriginal youth to join the reserves. For many young people, joining the forces is an attractive job option. Start drawing $28,000 a year for your first year. Then it goes up to twenty-nine. dollars 32000 by your fourth year, your salary is $44,000 a year. Once I found out that they were going to make me basically the Aboriginal recruiter for the province, I started targeting First Nations reserves, going to places that military people hadn't been before. I remember one road trip I went on it, put over 6,000 kilometers on the truck. I had to do it to, uh, to ensure I reached as many communities as I could. Ron sees the Canadian forces as a way to help Aboriginal kids escape the troubled lives they often face on reserve. Alcohol was a big thing in our house growing up, and my real father, I don't know who he is. I've never met him or anything. I have no knowledge of him. I grew up in the same house as my younger brother and sister. My younger brother's in jail for the next 20 years, and my younger sister's her brain is completely gone because of smoke and drugs. And the only reason why I turned out different is, I think, is because of the military. In his youth, Dayayege Alfred served in the U.S. Marine Corps Infantry. Now he's a professor of Indigenous governance and an activist for First Nations causes. Joining the military can be a positive thing as an, on an individual level, where you can gain a sense of discipline, and organization, and you can learn to adapt to authority, that's on an individual basis. But collectively speaking, no, I'm totally against it. It's, uh, it's an act against the existence of our nations, and what it does is it saps the strength of our communities and makes that strength the power of someone else. I'm feeling reserved. Man, that's how I'm living. I gotta do what this mic I was given. Try to get by. It's quite isolated. There's quite a bit of young people drinking, sometimes getting out of hand, I guess. I just try to keep away from that. There's a lot of suicidal problem around here. There's one, one of my friends passed away or committed suicide a couple years ago. I went into a little bit of a slump and kind of got lazy and got kicked out of school for attendance problems. <laughs> so that's why I'm hoping to get out of the bold eagle with the self-discipline. Yeah, the kids that want to 
stay here have very little to do. It was about 80 and 90 percent unemployment. I think it's a little bit sad in that, you know, nowadays uh, if they go into the army, there's a chance they end up in Afghanistan, and, and that's not such a good place to be. I wasn't too sure about Bold Eagle. I never wanted my kids to have anything to do with uh, military or whatnot. I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in the war itself. Well, I'm hoping he'll come out of it knowing what it is that he really wants. Half of Canada's First Nations population is under the age of 25, making them the fastest growing demographic in the country. It's very simple. You're 16, you're Aboriginal, you're in grade 10, passing grade 10, you're eligible for the program. When you grew up in a small reserve north of nowhere, you can't get a job at 7-Eleven, you can't get a job at Tim Hortons, you're definitely not going to get a job at McDonald's. There is not much else you're going to do other than sit around, drink and make babies. And this will give us the avenue to go out and make leaders out of our kids. I've been told to F off, I've been spit at. A couple of little kids coming over and say, hey, look, there's the cops, let's get out of here. <laughs> First, government put us on reserves, then they put us in residential school, now you're here to recruit and take our youth. We're not here to do that. I am not here to do this because I'm, I am one of you. I'm Major Neil McLean. I coordinate the Bold Eagle program. Bold Eagle is a program that uh, originated 17 years ago when uh, a number of chiefs in Saskatchewan went to the uh, militia at the time, the Army Reserve there, asking that the Army run a specific program for their youth that would give them some direction in life, give them a sense of teamwork, self-discipline, confidence. Our hope is that these young people be switched onto the military as a lifestyle, as a career, and choose that. Bold Eagle is the first stepping stone to joining the Army, but youth are free to choose whether or not to continue military service after the program. We as First Nations people are benefiting too because not all these kids are going to join the Army, but we have Bold Eagle members back from 1990 and on who are chiefs in our communities, who are lawyers, who are doctors. I think I'd like to just use it to, for post-secondary reasons, just to see what they can do for me. Do you like vacation? It'd be nice. It would be nice. It'd be nice leaving here for a while. Change the scenery. <laughs> <laughs> really? Not everyone sees programs like Bold Eagle as an opportunity. When Laura Holland's two boys wanted to join up, she was shocked that teens were being recruited in the schools. My boys had considered this as an option because there were so many programs in our neighborhood and in our community that were closing down and they felt trapped. And I've asked them, do they understand that it's the Canadian government and it's the military that has put us in a position of destitution and desperation in the first place? For the past week, actually, I've been worried about the testing and how I was gonna do. Time to uh, get this test going, start your day. Bold Eagle applicants need to pass a written exam as well as make it through a set of rigorous psychological, medical and fitness tests. It's the standard Canadian Forces screening process. Only one in four will make the cut. <laughs> so what they say? I can do push-ups. So you know what to work on? Yeah. Just by showing up here and putting pen to paper and applying and then actually showing up for the processing. It takes a lot of personal courage from the applicants to do that. So I'll let them know by you doing that, you're already in one step helping yourself. Keep it going, man. See you around. Stay out of trouble. See you, Jared. See you. I couldn't make it in. Well, I didn't get accepted because I didn't quit doing drugs early enough. I was supposed to do maybe about three months ahead of time, but I was only two. So I kind of just told me to pack up and go. Now I gotta wait what, another couple of months till we get our call. Yeah. It didn't go as well as I thought it was gonna, but I, I passed though. The person that interviewed me did said I was a pretty good candidate. He's, so that's the upside to today. On the Atakaku Preserve in Saskatchewan, Mahika Nahenakiu has been accepted to Bold Eagle. With good grades and a supportive family, 
he has a lot of potential. Well, I've always dreamed about doing something in the military. There's lots of other options out there, but I guess this is actually a first step towards me achieving my military career. My dad was the chief of this reserve for 24 years. I think it was now. Well, me growing up, it was always hard because whenever you had something nice, the people would always point fingers. Oh, you guys only have that because you guys are the chief's son. Or you're the chief's boy, or chief's baby. But that's not true. I hope that deep down they know that we worked for that. I knew he was going to be a good singer because he worked his lungs. He was always crying. <laughs> <laughs> the nickname when I was younger, she gave it to me. Was I was wanting to hang out with her and her friends because I thought they were cool, which they're not. <laughs> Anyways, the nickname she gave me was Matu Man. <laughs> Cry <laughs> baby. <laughs> Cry baby. Matu Man. <laughs> Matu Man. If I had a choice to decide everybody's the way they grew up is that they grew up this way, because this way you grew up with a lot more respect for life, a lot more thankfulness for the day. My opinion on my reserve is that I'm really, I feel really strong for it and I love it a lot. Just, I wish I didn't have to leave here just because there's barely any jobs. On a neighboring reserve, Blair Gamble just graduated from the same high school Maiken attends. He's pulled back from his partying lifestyle and with the help of his dad, is trying to get his life on the right track. What I hope to get from Bold Eagle is discipline. It's just to be disciplined because, like, growing up, I never really had that chance because, like, I, like, my dad never really lived with us and my mom was, like, like, you know what I mean. Like, it wasn't a good life to come up in. I never really got to learn that. So I had to learn it on my own. Like, he's a good guy now. Like, he used to be a rough alcoholic before and he went to the pen a couple times and... But now he's changed because, like, uh, he... Like, he believes in God and stuff like that now. Like, he hasn't drank in, like, about eight years. When I, when I decided to, to give my life to the Lord, you know, I, I just come out of jail when, uh, when I uh, actually accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior. That's, that's, what, that's what really changed my life. <clears throat> easy, easy. I really look up to him now because, like, he really wants me to strive for what I want in life. I thank Jesus every day of my life for my dad, mm -hmm. because without him, I don't know where I'd be today. Mm -hmm. I was doing a real lot of bad stuff. I was breaking into houses, I was beating up people, I was taking drugs. But none of that's in my life no more because I accepted yeah. Jesus. But it's hard because all my family is like that. And I can't, I can't see them like that. I know Blair's got that, that potential right there. Like, you know, he's, uh, he's making a stand for himself. That's all I want to say. Hey, you last two back there. The kid on the seats, empty it off. So we have two more seats there into the aisle. A lot of the kids that I've recruited from the various small communities hadn't even left their communities, let alone go to another province, let alone go to a military base. 55 successful Bold Eagle recruits travel from across Western Canada to Wainwright, Alberta. Over the next six weeks, they'll face culture shock, intense physical training, and the challenge of adapting to a strict military lifestyle. All right, troops, listen up. Welcome to the Canadian Armed Forces. Before we begin, I have a little gift for you to make sure that you all know that you're part of the military. I now have your Canadian military ID. So you'll come forward when I call your name. Those who make it through Bold Eagle will earn $3,000 and be qualified to join the reserves. Mine. There is no obligation to continue military service after the program. Back, look proud. Up, right, down. The military is a culture unto itself and it needs to be the culture that it is. 
but that doesn't mean it's easy to take. And so you're taking what are almost two polar opposites and pushing them together. Bold Eagle starts with a four-day culture camp to ease the recruits into Army life. The camp is run by Bold Eagle's First Nations partners. Elders teach recruits about traditional culture and help them bond as a group. Once it's over, the youth will be handed over to the military, and boot camp begins. Rules and regulations. But you know, our people have always had rules and regulations. I know you can do it. You know, when they started this program, we, we sold it to them that, you know, if you do this program, if you give this program a chance, there's going to be more, more First Nations people that are going to join your, your, your society. So, man, you know, that, that lit, lit up a light bulb. The people back home, they say, no matter how hard you think you have it, there's always somebody else there that has it worse, worse than you. So whenever you guys feel like giving up, always remember there's always somebody that has it worse than you. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank the creator for giving us this good day. Ever since we've been here, we have good days. My dad says, leadership's not the ability to command. It's the ability to inspire. You've inspired us. Hey, hey. Canada's First Nations have always volunteered for military duty, signing up by the thousands in the two world wars. But when the wars were over, Many were denied benefits given to other veterans, such as grants, loans, training, and farmlands. Sergeant Tommy Prince, one of Canada's most highly decorated soldiers, said, When I was overseas in the military, I was a Canadian. But when I came home, I was just an Indian. Three of my uncles were in World War II, and I know how they got treated when they got back. You can't change it, and I'm not scared to say that you know, they got the raw end of the deal there. If that was still like that today, there's no way I'd be in this uniform, I tell you right now. Major McLean, we lend you our children, our grandchildren, make good soldiers out of them. Oh. Hey. When you wake up in the morning, you're gonna make sure that there's black polish on your boots. You're gonna make sure that every button on your uniform is done up. <laughs> well, my mom's actually missing me quite a bit, so I guess she's taking it a little worse than I am. My mom was fine with me leaving for the six weeks. She's just a little sketchy on me joining the military and going over and overseas. Well, the hardest thing about it is like, like lately I felt homesick for no reason. Like I'd be standing there, and all of a sudden I'd feel sick in my stomach for some reason. But it's obvious that I'm like lonely but I think I can tough it out till five more weeks. Almost all of them told us they came here for the discipline, the fitness, for the training, and, and that's exactly what they're gonna get. And I can guarantee you, none of them have done anything like this before. Bold Eagle, hey! Fresh step over! Stop the race! One minute, you're so slow! Now you're trying to race everybody! Get back on the line! Many of these youth come from families with a history of military service, including Corporal Melissa Spreisnix. She went through Bold Eagle several years ago. Her younger sister, Keisha, followed in her footsteps, and the sisters graduated with top honors and joined the reserves. Both applied for duty in Afghanistan, but only Keisha was called up for the mission, while Melissa stayed home and works as a clerk for the Bold Eagle program. I have a really good idea of what options are on the reserve, and there aren't very many. Own a gas station, and you're considered rich. And I make more than what the person makes uh, owning a gas station on the reserve. So I think I've picked a good option. Get up! Get on the road! Run! Run! At first, it was a little hard to wake up early in the morning because usually I'm used to like. 12 hours sleeps, and now we get like, what is it? Six hours sleep, six and a half hours. Let's go! Hurry up! I 
don't have the body or the spirit or the willpower to sit behind a desk. I was raised in the forest, in the plains, really natural, and that's what the army basically is. It's all about toughness and courage and all that cheesy stuff I like. Comrades that we lost in Afghanistan yesterday, halfway down, hold it. Hold it! Halfway down and hold halfway it. Down. Get off your knees. It's for the boys that fought for you to be here. Oh. Who are you? Bold Eagle! Who are you? Bold Eagle! Nobody really likes having to be yelled at in the morning, but it's the way it is, I guess. For the most part, it's pretty fun, I think. I hear walls faster and you're shuffling, so get away! The thing about Bald Eagle is, like, I, I don't mind it. Like, everything else is good, except the only thing that I don't like about it is having to wake up every morning and do PT and then doing inspection. And it kind of gets stressful and, I don't know, but it, I don't know, it kind of disciplines you. Is that clean? This. Just next to Corporal. Yes. You ready to go to the field? Ready yes. to go to war? No, you're not. With rare moments off from the program, the recruits bond quickly to help each other deal with the stress of the boot camp. Can't smile, can't laugh. Can't look at them when they're talking. I got chills yeah. for not looking at them. <laughs> 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 there are always recruits who don't make it through because of injuries, family emergencies, or just not being able to take the army life. I have nothing to do with this camp. See me talk run by white people. We yell at us natives. About one in five recruits drop out before graduation. 20, 30. Dual fire five rounds at the left hand target. I never really knew that I was a crack shot. I never really knew I was such a good athlete. I never really knew that I had like leadership capabilities until I came in here. It's a good feeling. Actually, I'm thinking about <laughs> joining the military after high school. <laughs> Helps with my laziness. I guess I used to be pretty lazy. He'd be one of the guys that would keep the whole platoon together. He's a very good team player and he keeps everybody grounded. He'd make a good soldier. Likewise. Now that I kind of got my feet wet, I kind of think the military life isn't for me. So I don't even, don't plan on joining it after this program's done. I really do want to be in the army and like be able to like experience like going across seas and stuff like that. Like when I was a little kid, I kind of fell in love with like that. Like that feeling to be in the army and like being able to like shoot someone or something like that. Well, I don't want to kill anyone, but like, but if it's for your country and for freedom and stuff like that, like I would do that. Why I want to go overseas for the military is because I wanted to be the first one in Bald Eagle to get a confirmed kill. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Shoot someone. Um, I don't know. Uh, to protect myself or my country, yeah, I could do it. I could probably do it if it was legal. If I was there, I'll just think of it as just a job. The others, the other, the Taliban, whatever, it's just a job for them. So it's just a job for me. If it was up to me, I just why can't we all be friends? <laughs> but it's not up to me. So I'm just trying another route. While Bold Eagle recruits consider joining the army, Canadian soldiers are fighting the most dangerous mission since the Korean War. This whole idea of peacekeeping has been uh, abandoned in the last two or three years. Since 2001, the Canadian government's made the decision that it's no longer gonna be a peacekeeping force. That in fact, it is gonna be a regular army allied with the Americans. On the heels of one of the bloodiest days of the Afghan mission, Melissa and her family wait for Keisha to come home. With only a few days' notice, Keisha was shipped off to Afghanistan, and it's been a tense six months as her family waits for her safe return. The plane has been delayed to return the bodies of recently killed soldiers to their families. I'm so worried about her as well, too, like, because she's been through a lot over there. Is she going to be Keisha? Like, is, 
you know, is she going to be like changed? Keisha! <laughs> They asked us if we wanted to stay longer, <laughs> if we wanted to extend our contracts. And we're like, nope, no, I'm going home. It was just, it got too hard. It's, it is, it's really hard listening to your friends getting shot at and blown up. It wasn't a lot of fun. When I was a little kid, you know, I listened to my grandfather's stories of World War II or my uncle's stories of Vietnam and just sit there and listen to them and say, hey, you know, I wish I could have that kind of strength to do something like that, to put your life on the line for a cause. Today, our forces have suffered serious casualties in Afghanistan. For those who have lost their family or their colleagues, these are... Well, it's kind of disheartening seeing stories like that. There is cause. <laughs> kind of makes... Every once in a while, gives me a second, makes me think twice about joining, but... <laughs> I think that'd be pretty freaky going over there, but... You do what you gotta do, I guess, to get the job done as a soldier. 11 of the 55 recruits won't finish Bold Eagle. Many who've stuck it out this far know the Army life isn't for them, but are determined not to quit. Once a week, the recruits get time with the camp elders to share their frustrations and cope with the stress. How's everybody's week going? Awesome. awesome. Good. awesome. Mine? Holy. Um, constantly getting in trouble. I'm on my last warning. So, I hope I make it to grad with you guys, and yeah. I'm really happy to be with all you guys here, because if I came to the army by myself, I probably wouldn't have last. We're almost done, so there's no use quitting now, guys, and let's make it to graduation. That's all I have to say. Well, I guess I'll <laughs> sing a song for you guys now. I would probably wouldn't have the strength to be in here. They keep me laughing like Gambo is, you know what the hell he's doing right now, putting that. <laughs> Spider is might as well pick his nose with that pipe cleaner. <laughs> I guess it's, it's it's okay to say that nobody really likes violence. It's also weird about danger and I'm only 17. It's like I'm old enough to start my basic military qualifications course. I'm basically old enough to take a bullet from my country. But as I walked into the Canucks the other day, I wasn't old enough to buy a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get scared sometimes, like, what am I going to do when I grow up? So I was this year and before I graduated. Like, I didn't know what, to, didn't know what I was going to do. Like, I didn't tell you guys yet about, like, something back home, but I'm going to be having a kid pretty soon. So. I know. I have to see what happens there and how it's got, how that's gonna turn out. Turn out. So, like, I gotta make a living for my kid now because it's not for me no more. It's gonna have to be for my family and, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be a daddy. Who are you? Bald Eagle. Who are you? Well, today's grad, and I felt pretty excited about it. I know I won't miss this place that much. But I'm gonna miss like all the people that I met here and like became go, friends go. with. Go, go, go. Today we're celebrating.
celebrating the graduation of Bold Eagle 17. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce two former Bold Eagle graduates, Corporal Melissa Spreisnick and Bombardier Keisha Potts, who's just returned from Afghanistan. While I was sitting watching the grad parade for Bold Eagle, I was really like proud of those, those uh, troops there. Based on his leadership and teamwork skills, Mahikan has been chosen to receive the top award at Bold Eagle. The Bold Eagle Shield is presented to Private Mahikan Nehemiku. Bold Eagle has been the first stepping stone in my career towards hopefully being a military officer or Somewhere higher up in the food chain, they get me yelled at all the time. I want to yell back. <laughs> Canada's army needs soldiers like you. There can be no more noble calling than that of a soldier in the Canadian army. The offer is open to all of you. With their $3,000 paycheck and basic military qualification, the Bold Eagle graduates will head home and decide whether to take the next step in army training. Over a third of these recruits will join the military. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> oh, my son. Turn her out. Let's see. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got to make a timing. I got to be back in the shacks in eight minutes. Okay. I guess that means then, therefore, I will be giving my son perhaps. He'll decide in two months, but I'll be giving my son to Canada. <sighs> I didn't see my son for six weeks. What if I don't see him for a year? Or ever? If he goes overseas, or if any of these other young fellows go overseas, I'll be proud of them. But do the best job that they can for the purpose that they're there for, yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah, and they're making a livelihood for their families, for themselves, you know. and they're making their people proud. Yeah. Overall, I I like this course, and uh, I I'm kind of a little I'm a little sad that it's over. Well, my future plans uh, I'm going to do my soldier qualification in my SQ, join the reserves, and uh, somewhere in BC, most likely Vancouver. It's a real honor to see to see my son come this far. I'm proud of you, man. Just a little emotional, right now. Take a picture of all the guys, right? Yeah. I knew Blair worked hard to, to come this far. You know, he he struggled from the beginning, but uh, I'm just glad he he persevered to the end to make it happen today, just to, to succeed. My girlfriend sent me the ultrasounds in the mail there, and I saw it, and I know I was really shocked to see that little baby in there. And I know it kind of made me happy in a way, and I know I was glad to, I was glad to be a dad. At first, I was scared when I found out she was pregnant, but I feel pretty good about it now. I wouldn't mind him being a soldier, like I accept that if that's what he wants to do, but we discussed it already and he wants to wait about a year and a half for our baby to grow up for a little bit more and then I know he's going to pursue it, so. My dad, he doesn't really want me to join the army, he wants me to become a cop. I really want to join the army, but like the main reason why he's a Christian now is because a cop talked to him about that. I haven't told my mom about me joining the army just yet. Uh, uh, she still doesn't, I don't think she doesn't want me joining the army. But uh, I think she'll understand after I have a good talk with her and let her know what the deal is and hopefully she'll understand. Third part at Private BN Gamble has successfully completed the Bold Eagle Basic Military Qualification. Got him now. <laughs> After Bold Eagle, Noel returned home to finish his last year of high school. 
Falls. I was pretty stoked about joining the Army, but when, when I was doing Bold Eagle there, near the end there, and just seeing all the news about the about the, our, our soldiers over in Afghanistan and seeing what's made me really think hard of what, what I was really getting into. Well, my mom's opinion, yeah, she really doesn't want me going joining the Army regardless. Doesn't want me going overseas. Says that uh, she didn't bring me into this world to be a killer and that, well, must be pretty hard thinking about losing your son. My priority right now is to graduate high school and worry about that stuff after I graduate. Before Bold Eagle, senior on in school, but Remember what I you was, said to me before? I was like a real gangster guy, it's real mean. <laughs> Remember what you said to me the first time you told me that? You are like, I was thought you were so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. Every time I talked to your sister... Henneke, he kind of talked me into like, why don't you join the reserves with me, bro? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. Might as well check it out. He was already thinking about joining, and I just kind of just tugged him along. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a good job. Unlike soldiers in the regular forces, reservists can work part-time and aren't obligated to go on overseas missions. You go in once a week, but they often ask you to go in more than that. When I was at Bold Eagle, I, I did not like it at all. But when I came back, I just missed it for some reason. I got lonesome for the army. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay now you do it about your... Oh, okay, okay. I haven't, even, I haven't done this in a long time. We get polish on those boots. I'll discuss with you the procedure when you come in here later. Yes, Corporal. Whenever you polish your boots. Whenever you polish them? Did you polish them? See, yeah, I did. All right. <laughs> I see my future in the military basically as being an infantryman. They're always the first ones on the scene, no matter what. We're the strong ones. We drive our bodies. Still set on a military career, Mahikan is continuing his training in the reserves and plans to join the regular forces full time. I'm scared of, of you continuing in this and, 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 and seeing you get on that plane and, and going. So at university, you never thought of that? I did. I thought of a lot of things. I thought of being a doctor and musician. But really, what really makes my people proud? What would make them feel strong again? When's the last time they actually seen a real warrior? Probably about a hundred years ago. It's, I think it's pretty good. Because they yeah, also make scientists too. and, and they, they create uh, pilots. You can do anything, you don't have to fight, man. You yeah. fight. I got it. I feel a link because before the military was here, we had our own warriors. And today you can't really go around and be a warrior. Also, we call the gang and yet. So in this way, I'm an official warrior. Well, this right here, this is my baby boy, Cassius, Lyle, Kendall, Gamble. Like, all my friends know, like, I kind of changed. Like, I'm not the same guy I used to be. Like, before it used to be like, let's go drink, let's go smoke weed or something. I know I just used to be depressed a lot. But now that I don't do it, I just feel better now. Like, I feel clean now. <laughs> what I was going to do is I was going to join the army, like Reg Force, but... Like, I, didn't, I just didn't want to leave my kid just like that. I'm going to focus more on, like, being an RCMP. It's to make my dad proud, you know, like, and so I won't be stuck without a job or anything like that. I know we've grown up so much since we had our baby, and I know, I know we can do it. Plus, we want to move out of our parents' house and be independent as our baby, so. I know. I didn't really look up to my dad when I was younger because he was never around. And it's like, it's very important to have a father figure because 
you'll kind of be lost without one. <laughs> Oh, today's grad day. I'm excited and nervous, just anxious to get up there and get my diploma. Good evening, and welcome to graduating class 2007. Noel's community has singled him out as a responsible young man and recently gave him a traditional First Nations name, a big honor for someone his age. My guest son's name is Gedem uh, Tuoyuk. It was my uncle's name. It was passed down for me after he passed away. I was proud. I, I was been wanting a name for a while, and now that I have a name, I feel I have the responsibility to stick around and try to keep our traditions going. No Argetta. You're like a proud mama. <laughs> really close to a lot of people around here and I don't really want to leave the community but then again there's not too many jobs around here that I'd want to be doing for the rest of my life like hard labor doing working on a resume now so hopefully the bold eagle will be an asset try in town somewhere I'm not too sure where it doesn't even really matter to me as long as I get a job soon <laughs> After 16 years of military service, Sergeant Ron LeBlanc volunteered to go on the Afghan mission in 2008. He'll act as a liaison between the military and the local Afghan population. It's going to be roadside bombs slash IEDs. It is a dangerous mission and I'm doing a dangerous job, but uh, it's not fair for me to stay back while everybody else goes off and, and does their bit. Ron had planned on leaving the army to become an Aboriginal liaison officer with the RCMP. I could make a greater impact as, a, as an RCMP helping my people, Aboriginal people. And my goal is to be uh, in Aboriginal policing. Are there any questions on safety? However, I, I'm a soldier first. Um, I feel I owe them at least one mission, and then I'll move on. We did some language training with some interpreters, and uh, there were two Afghani guys. I was shocked to find out that some of their traditions and the way they do things are very similar to our culture. They're an indigenous people. I'm an indigenous person. They're, they've had a rough go, and if I can do something to help them, then that's what I'm there to do. So for those of you who think that it's all glory going over there, and it's good money, it's dangerous, and I'm not going to lie to you, guys didn't come home. Yeah, I'm not worried about it right now, but if when I get there, might be a different story. How's your parents think about this? My mom? Yeah. I haven't told her yet. Understandably, she'll be nervous. I think so. Your father? Don't have one. Okay. Uh, I thought about uh, you know, being away from my wife for a year, a year and a half. And uh, that, for me, was the hardest decision to make, was the time away from her. Doesn't make me excited that he could be in danger. I would have much preferred him go somewhere that it's more peaceful and help the people there, but obviously they need more help in Afghanistan. Better than rations. The important thing for me is to know that she supports me, and um, that means a lot. If she didn't support this, me going, I probably wouldn't go. Basically, we're moving to a new place house-sitting for a friend that's going overseas with me. So uh, my wife's moving into his place to house-sit. It's more real that we're, you know, we're starting to pack and move, and our lives are shifting because I'm deploying. So it's evident by just what we're doing here. It's just sinking in. Just going to miss her, like, you know, every day. With the passage of time, bombardier Keisha Potts has decided to return to Afghanistan. Both she and Melissa applied for the mission, but only Keisha was called up and will deploy in 2008. Everyone knows the military is a dangerous job. You see a strength in yourself that you've never seen before. And it's just, you get that adrenaline off that. And I, I like that, I like that adrenaline and I want to keep that feeling. The last few months have not gone as smoothly as Mahikan had hoped. He left school without graduating, and the military postponed his soldier qualification course. 
Every time I've made future plans, it's kind of backfired on me. I guess it's just a sign from up above just to live one day at a time. I hope to join the Reg Force as soon as I can, as soon as I'm after, right after I'm done my grade 12. That is my career, I'm not going to give up on it. Blair is continuing his military training and is enrolled to take a six-month RCMP preparation course. He's still weighing his options for the future. The thing about overseas is, I'm still thinking about that. Like, that's a big decision to make. Like, if I went there and came back, I'd feel really good about myself. Everyone would be proud of me, and everyone wants that feeling, you know? I want to do something in my life where I can be proud of it, and, like, I know I'm going to be an RCMP. I just, I'm just really taking my time, because I'm still young. Like, 20 years old is young to join an RCMP. I want to do something positive with my life, you know? I hold the glass with the death grip The coach goes who said trip Except it's not your average electric Age guy with pina and say bye Cause I write to let it out Then forget about For the future age When visions fade within me Sick of the rage I just simply Made a decision to rhyme On the rhythm and division of time Down an image and a vision of mine Eternally I It'll never be the same We are, we are Unstoppable by the obstacles Impossible possibles It'll never be the same We are, we are Unstoppable by the obstacles Impossible possibles It'll never be the same We are, we are Unstoppable by the obstacles Impossible possibles It'll never be the same We are, we are Unstoppable by the obstacles Impossible possibles My thoughts drift across the mind, the sight for the care of living. Stuck in my soul at high, rub my eyes to clear the vision. Getting crazy, bit, feeds my compulsion. No other supplement will ever feed my convulsions. Every couple steps of finding myself delving deeper. I'm a selfish dreamer, giving it hell to be the top of the believer more than qualified. My war cry indicates my presence when it storms across the sky. So shut the f up and follow my lead moving forward as the past gets cauterized. As the world's rotating, I'm gaming, aiming to prove that I'm not something to f with a rough or dangerous moves. If you see through my pupils, judgments pass, we quickly change up. Blood suckers and pump, the lust of blood, my veins pump. Talking that same junk, that's all it's meant to be. After the smoke is clear, the same, it'll never be. It'll never be the same, we are, we are. Unstoppable by the 